All right, I'm going to start. I know there may be a couple of people still coming in, but you know we want to get going. And part of the reason we want to get going is because um, when I think about like workshops, uh, I, I've had in, the, in this head, in my, this picture in my head, where you know everybody's kind of coding along, and like if you get stuck, I jump down and I run over and I help you, and everybody, you know, when I get stuck, you know, you help me. You can still do that, and um, you know we only have an hour. And so I'm going to be going really fast. And um, you can type along if you want to, but honestly, it might make more sense to just kind of follow along. Um, if you do want to do it, there's a, uh, there's a thumb drive. Uh, there's actually a whole bunch of thumb drives. And, uh, and you're welcome to it. You don't need the thumb drive in order to get the source code because it will be on uh, my site, which is peakzebra.com after uh, the talk. Um, there's also, uh, because I knew that I was going to have to pack a whole lot into a little box, uh, I also, while I was preparing this, I um, recorded uh, you know, a bunch of video segments that actually do the whole, the whole thing, including the parts I'm leaving out. Um, you know, like starting from, okay, let's use create block to actually create the starter, which is already done when we start here today. Okay, so my assistant has the fancy USB drives, and I, you're welcome to, but I would love it if you didn't. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, so I'm Robert, and uh, a couple of years ago I started, oh, I should just say, uh, there's a direct, there's a zip file on the thumb drive, and you would need to uh, unzip it into a, a directory in your plugin directory in an already installed local WordPress. Okay, so um, yeah, so um, it's clear that there's a lot of interest in like doing dynamic things with blocks because I know you didn't come here, you know, from name recognition. Um, and uh, and I was I was earlier I was sitting in on uh, another uh, uh, workshop on creating blocks, uh, sort of in a new and upcoming style. And there was also just you know that room was filled too. Um, but let me, if I could, just get a really quick sense of the room. Like, how many of you are, you know, like serious React programmers? Oh, good, good. No, this is great. This is perfect. You can leave, though. You can. Um, yeah, me neither, right? I mean, I've learned a fair bit about it, uh, but like, it's okay, really. And I think one of the things the WordPress community has to do is kind of make it okay to be finding your way in, in React and JavaScript and getting comfortable with stuff. Um, how many of you uh, have uh, created custom blocks? Okay, good, 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 good. Um, and in doing that, you, you did that, let me, let me ask it this way. How many of you have created blocks that had both a JavaScript edit function and a JavaScript save function? Okay, this is like a, an exam, right? Um, and how many of you have created blocks that have a, a PHP dynamic render callback? Okay, okay, so if, like half of you, okay. Yeah, I think, actually, I think this is pitched about right. So, so you can blame me if this makes no sense. Um, okay, we're off. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at handling dynamic data in blocks. And when I say blocks, I mean really the front end of the block. Right? The, black, the back end of the block, you're, you're typing in your text and um, you're, uh, you know, configuring the padding and all of that stuff. And all that stuff is done in React components. So that's already dynamic, right? Um, and the, pr the thing that is uh, sort of an issue for some applications is that if you're, um, normally what happens is you render a static HTML uh, block on the front end, right? And like if you want to like call the user by their name or figure out whether they are allowed to press the button or you know any of those things, you don't have that information on the front end. Um, so 
so what we're going to be looking at is actually, we're not really going to be looking at, at the sort of normal dynamic block rendering, except that it's already, I've already added it in. And I'll backfill a little here and there and just point out what, you know, where those things are in place. Uh, and then we'll talk about uh, running JavaScript after the PHP render function has done its little bit so that you can add interactivity uh, using you know, JavaScript on the front end, but also React components as well. Um, and uh, we'll talk about just, you know, really kind of how do you put those things into that JavaScript and make it work, and it's actually not that hard. And then finally, um, if I can start talking faster, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about sort of the, the sort of final step, uh, which is, um, you might want to pass some data back while people are interactively, uh, you know, working with whatever it is that's going on on your page, and and you know, like, I'm going to be using a calendar component. So, like, if they click on a certain day, you might want to ask, like, hey, what 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 uh, time slots are open on? You know, it's like rewriting Calendly or something. So, um, so that's what we're up to. Um, by way of quick and slightly weird review, I just want to super fast remind us that the normal way that things happen with uh, blocks is that you, you know your, your user's browser actually requests a page, and the page has already been written as a post into the database, and it's all HTML. And you know if it has a couple of blocks in it, they're in there, right, as HTML. And uh, in this case, you know, you could just pass the, the page right back. Um, but you can also set it up so that PHP, so that there's a callback to a PHP function before the page is delivered, right? So uh, we put in, the, you know, these two static ones are already there, but oh, this one here needs a, you know, a callback to the render function that we've written. And I couldn't find a, uh, a render function, render callback function icon. Um, so I've used this balloon poodle, um, which I think is good. Uh, so the balloon poodle uh, gets called, and he has knowledge of everything that's going on at the server, right? He's running on the server in the current time that the page was requested, and so can determine things like, oh, who is this user, and what rights do they have, and uh, you know, if you've written your own application, you can look at the you know, current state of the data in your application. You can take all of that, or the, your balloon poodle avatar can, and you know, pack it up and hand that into the page, and that is what gets returned uh, to the browser. Uh, yeah. So enough blather. Um, so I um. How legible is that? Can you see? Yeah? Um, I gave a talk somewhat similar to this in a room about this size, and it was just a regular big TV. I mean, nobody could see anything. This is pretty fabulous. Um, yay. <laughs> so um, there's a... Uh, so there's a tool that... Well, let me back up a little. So we're on, we're on a fresh install of WordPress running locally. Um, you know, it, I've done a couple of things to it, but I'm going to confess to that right now. Um, so uh, there's a plugin that is in it that was created by um, using a tool called Create Block. Are you are familiar with Create Block? Um, so if you're not, um, life will go on, uh, but. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of a handy way to just get all the junk in place, right? It creates a template of a complete plugin. So that's what I did, and I really have not messed with it except for the couple of changes that, that I'm going to tell you about. Uh, but so you wind up with a directory. Yeah, so the server is called Acropolis, and so the plugin really had to be named Parthenon. Um, I know. Um, but you know it's got all the regular pieces, right? So there's a there's a PHP that registers it as a plugin or declares it as a plugin, and uh, and in that PHP 
I mean, we can look at it. Um, we uh, are hooking uh, the init action, which you know written, makes a call back to this guy, and this guy. All it, this function does is uh, register the block, and I think pretty much all of you have done this in one way or another, right? Um, so the less said, the better. Except that I have added, you know, you can add an, a, as a second parameter an array of uh, properties. And uh, so there is this render callback, which uh, has a pointer to the name of a function. And so this is the function that right now is actually uh, rendering the block, and it's doing so dynamically. Um, so um, I'll, I'll say just a little bit more about this in a second. But you know, there, there are other pieces here. There is the block.json that kind of provides the configuration for most of the things that you care about when you register the block. The only thing that I've added to it that wasn't put there by create block is this uh, attributes part. And the only thing that I've done there is add one attribute. We're going very minimalistic today. Um, and that is my header, and uh, it's a string, yeah? And then finally we have, well, not finally, but then there's also a JS file. Um, I, I always think of this as like on the front end, but of course, I mean, it really kind of is, and it, it will run on the client, but it's kind of, it'll be running uh, as we're editing the page or creating the page. But so it, it uh, has a couple of properties that matter to us. Um, one uh, points to an edit function, and one points to, normally this would be a, a, a JS function that handled rendering static HTML. But I'm returning a null here, just as a signal that I don't want to do it that way. And um, so what will happen is that this will actually be rendered in uh, in the PHP function that we were looking at just a second ago, yeah? So, um, so that's already uh, on here, right? It's in, so it all winds up in a plugin directory uh, called Parthenon. And um, if we look at um, our plugins, um, there it is. And we just, you know, we'd want to activate it. I always like it when the first thing works. <laughs> um, and we can go in and add uh, a post. Uh, whoops. Uh, did I? Come on. That was lightning fast. Uh, hello, Athens, right? And we can, you know. Uh, you know, sure is good to be here. And then maybe I want to add that block. And uh, the create block tool by default puts your new block in widgets. And there it is. And we can add it. And um, normally the create block would, would have created something that um, just had static text in it, right? It would just be returning a string of text. Uh, I've, I've modified the edit function a little bit so that it has one React component, which is the thing you see here. Um, and um, there must be a little CSS kicking around in the create block thing as well, because I didn't do anything to make that blue. Uh, but um, obviously, you can go back and you know css -ify this to your heart's content. Um, but you know, we could put something in here. Um, now we are having real fun, right? And you know, we can publish it. And so this is the moment when normally the save function would run, and in this case, the, the render function uh, will run only when we request the page. So I can view the post. No, I can't. It went away. I really got to say, I don't love the. Uh, current UI. Yeah, so you can see here, um, like, this is coming from that. That's 
data that we stored as an attribute, my header attribute, and um, uh, so we're just picking it up. We're picking it up in the PHP function, right? So uh, th that's then just pasted in basically as an H2 here. So, um, you know, so if we look at the edit just real quick, you can see there's, there's where I've added that text control. Um, and, you know, if, if you haven't spent a little bit of time with React, this is where things start to get a little freaky. Uh, but it, it's, it's really, it's kind of, the, the way that I think about this part of React is that components are kind of like HTML tags that you just get to make up, you know? So, yeah, HTML doesn't have a text control tag, but darn it, it should, and so now it does, right? <laughs> and then React kind of makes that all work. Um, and, um, and then on the front end, back in Parthenon, so, uh, now I need to get the data that was stored as an attribute um, when edit ran. So fortunately, this happens just kind of like magically uh, in, in WordPress because I get past those attributes as an array, right? You can call it obviously anything you want, but I call it attributes because that's what it is. And um, it's an associative array. And um, are we all output buffer users? Yeah? Okay, good. Um, so, you know, here's what I'm going to be sticking into the output buffer. And, um, you know, there's this, I've just made this little move here where I drop into PHP for a second. And, uh, and I can echo attributes. And the, uh, the element that I want is uh, my header. And I'll just get the value from that. Um, now, that's all well and good. But, um, as I said before, we'd actually kind of like to be running maybe some JavaScript and have some React components. Like, it's kind of nice to have like that nice edit field in the back. It'd be kind of nice to have it in the front. And also, you know, it'd be nice to have a bunch of components and have them not have to have them. I mean, the nice thing about React is they'll automatically refresh as the user intera interacts with it, right? If they toggle something and we need to change part of the display, it'll just pick up that state change and, you know, re-render, re-display. Um, so those are all things that it might be kind of nice to do. Um, yeah, so let's do them. Um, so here in source, I'm going to create a file, right, because we're going to need to be running some JavaScript somewhere, right? So I'm going to create a file called frontend.js. I'm calling it that because it is JS that runs in the front end. And I'm going to just put in, you know, your basic uh, hello from front end. Kind of an alert message there. Um, and that's all I'm going to put in there, right? Because whenever I try to, like, do three things at once in a program without checking that they worked, like, it, they don't work. So. All I'm trying to establish here is that we're actually able to get the file in queued and that, uh, that it's ready to run uh, in the front end. And then it actually runs. And so if it actually runs when we reload this page, we should get this alert message, right? So um, now there's a couple of problems that we have. Um, problem one is that we will have to enqueue this file, right? And I think you know, a lot of people are already. I can remember, though, being just like, oh, God, no, this is so complex. You know, wh where's that JavaScript going to go? And, um, you know, in, so WP and Q is kind of a, uh, an unfamiliar thing. But at any rate, it's what you use to get your JavaScript running in the WordPress world everywhere, including here. So that's one thing we've got to take care of. The other thing we've got to take care of is that this JS file, when we really get going is going to have React components in it. And possibly I'm also using like ES6 uh, syntax and punctuation and so forth, none of which will run in browsers. Uh, so it's got to be translated uh, magically uh, by a tool called Webpack. And it will uh, wind up in the build uh, directory up here about 
about which more in a second, but um, how many, can I just, so I know how fast to talk about this, how many people are familiar with uh, Webpack and, okay, all right, well, never mind. Um, so we're, so we're going to be running, um, we're going to be running um, you know, NPM run start here, but uh, it will not on its own look for files that aren't index.js, right? So we've got to specify which files that it's going to look for. So I've got to uh, edit uh, package.json, right? So here is uh, our start script. And if, if I decide to uh, in individually call out files that I want it to treat as entries, um, it no longer looks for index.js automatically, so uh, the first one I got to put in is that. So that's going to be source. Uh, yeah. Whoops. Sorry. Index. Dot uh, js, and then also source front end. Dot js. And in the real world, I would also put that up here in build. But the truth is, I hardly ever use build, right? So I'm just going to use. Uh, run. Eh, well, we'll just now. I'm, now I'm feeling uh, guilty. <laughs> Superstitious. I don't know. I just feel like something bad will happen if I don't do that. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. So now I can, if I want to, and I know you're thinking like, but he hasn't saved front end JS yet. Yeah because I needed to make that change before it would actually pay attention. So I'm just going to start it up here. Wow, that is really weird. Why are we over there? Is, huh, it's fine. Of course, I still haven't saved front end JS, but uh, when I do, <laughs> it will uh, transpile that stuff again. And now, if we were to look in build, we would see that there is a uh, front end.js. And it sounds like most folks are familiar with, you know, how this process works. So, you know, build is where the production versions of these things is going to come from. Uh, but we basically can close that directory and forget about it for the rest of the development side of things. Um, and then the other thing we've got to do is we've got to enqueue this file. So I'm going to do that over here in, uh, in my pz the block um, render function. And um, I'm doing it here. You know, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do this. It's kind of a habit I got into. Uh, because in the early days uh, of this stuff, uh, the scripts would load both on the front end and the back end, right? And you don't really want that. And they, they would also like load whether you use the block or not, like if you just kind of enqueued it in regular old life. And this way it would only load uh, if you, uh, you know, actually, were, it, it, it can only load when this block is getting rendered because it's in the render function. Um, so, uh, so WP. Uh, script, right, which takes, uh, you know, a variable number of uh, parameters, but um, we're going to use six. Um, I almost never use six parameters. The first one is just a tag. It's just got to be, I mean, it's a slug, basically. Um, a handle, I think, is what it's called in this context. Um, and it's just got to be unique. And um, normally you'd give it like a more meaningful name. Uh, but the fact is you wouldn't probably never use it again, um, but the system would. Um, yeah, so let's see. We also need to give it the URL. Um, dir URL. Um, And then we're going to concatenate that with um, 
build frontend.js. And then we need to tell it what dependencies uh, this script will have when it's loaded. And that's going to be an array. And uh, we're going to have two dependencies, just trust me on this. Um, so one is WP element, which is basically the React library, just gussied up a little bit for the WordPress party. And um, also uh, WP components, uh, which uh, that is the components, right? <laughs> That, uh, and those are the things that, that WordPress provides that you normally see on the back end. And there's, there's a whole little army of them. There's really quite a lot of them. Um, uh, let's see, so there's that. And then the next thing, nobody knows what it is. And then finally, there is this uh, true, which, do you know what it is? No? Yeah. Um, but we can ignore it for our purposes. Um, so true um, answers the question, hey, should I load this in the footer? And the answer is true. Um, uh, why? Because uh, we'd like the page to be there before we start monkeying around with it, right? Uh, we need the DOM to be loaded. So, um, so we want it to run after that's happened. But if I've done everything right, and I mean, what are the odds? Um, <laughs> you're laughing now. Uh, <laughs> uh, then uh, this computer, which is like really running the local site slow today, I don't know quite what's up with that, should show me eventually, yes, thank you, Jesus. Um, the <laughs> so, uh, so this is, in fact, enqueued and running. So life is good, right? Life is good. So um, the thing is, uh, we um, over here in front end JS, we're not actually doing very much. And we would actually like to be able to like insert some stuff into this page. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going we're gonna to create sort of like a little marker for ourselves when we render this in PHP. And then we're going to find that little marker in the JavaScript code, and we're going to render to that location. Uh, so uh, over here in PHP, um, I'm just in, the, in this uh, HTML that I'm rendering, I'm just going to add a div. And in fact, it's an empty div, uh, so it's not going to look like much. But I am going to give it a class. Why is class red? You know, I never use the light. Is it normally red when? OK. I'm, I'm always using dark. I think it reads better if it's light up here. But so, like, I'm like, oh my god, red. I'm panicking. <laughs> uh, yeah. And if you're thinking like you're, you know, you're the, one of these React heavies, and you're thinking that should be class name with a capital N, right? We're not in React right now. We're just spewing out some HTML from PHP. Uh, so we got to give it a class name. You can make it be anything you want. Um, I'm going to make it PZ target div because it is kind of a target. Uh, PZ for peak zebra. Um, right? Makes sense? And um, so we'll say, you know, we'll save that. And when it, when it runs, it'll insert that div. And then over on the, 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 the JavaScript side, um, we want to find that div. So we want to do something like const div equals do document uh, query selector, yeah? Um, and um, we've got to um, tell it what we want to use as the selector. And the selector, in this case, is going to be that class name that we just created. And for reasons that, honestly, I don't understand, uh, we have to use the dot here. Um, 
and uh, you just do. Sorry. Uh, target div, right? And um, so that will return um, this div. Div is uh, just a variable, I should say. It, div's not a magic word here. You know, I could make it something else. Um, and, uh, and that enables me, right? So I'll, that'll be returned, presumably, right? It'll find it. And then uh, I can start thinking about doing things like changing the inner HTML property to like some text. Some text would be nice. Would be nice. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So I left the alert in there just to annoy people who are annoyed by alerts. Here we go. Um, yeah, I love that. And um, and he, down here, okay, we're we're getting that text, right? So so there's a little bit of progress, right? We can find the spot, and we can put stuff in it. We're still not quite there, right? So um, w we don't actually want to like just directly change the inner HTML here for a whole lot of good reasons, but we. What we want to do is do uh, React DOM um, render, and that's going to um, it's going to take two parameters, right? The first parameter is a component, and uh, as I said before, components are kind of like you know HTML fairyland, right? You can just kind of make up tags, right? <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to call mine my component because that's the best I can do on short notice. Uh, and then the second part is like, where should this thing render? And this thing should render at xdiv. Now, the only problem we have at this point uh, is that I really did make up my components, so like, the system has no idea what to do with this, so I need to write a function that explains what this thing is. So my component, right, and... Um, yeah, so um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just I'm just going to return uh, some basically HTML. What I'm really returning is JSX, right? So like fancy, you know, like expensive HTML, and um, uh, because uh, React has or JSX has some some rules. Uh, one of them is that everything's got to be inside a single parent uh, thing. And um, so, you know, just a div to wrap this. And then uh, let's use what we used in the back. Just, I mean, this will be a different instance of it. Text control and, you know, we'll give it a label just to show that we mean business. Uh, you know, enter some front end data, uh, tags need to be closed or self-closing in JSX. Self-closing is nice. Um, and then for a dramatic effect, I'm going to use date picker because it's dramatic and it's effective. Um, this, of course, won't quite work um, because uh, we Although I, you know, I made up uh, my component, and text control and date picker, I didn't make up. They're real things, I guess. Um, but I do need to sort of like bring them into this context. So, whoops, up here, I'm still going to leave that alert. <laughs> Come on. I need to uh, import text control. And date picker from WP components. So if you think back to when we said that we were dependent on WP components, um, is it WP or is it WordPress? It's WordPress. Um, so different name, but this is the package name, and, and it's a different reference than the other, but it's the same stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so I think that 
should be good. And so now if we uh, flip over here and go through the slow and tedious process of reloading this page, Um, right, because it, it draws out the dramatic effect, right? Um, because nothing renders until it's cleared. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, a text control, and, and we've got a dramatic uh, date picker, right? I mean, you think about it. I did basically nothing to get that whole date picker there, right? Um, I put in the word date picker twice, right? So. Um, and it's smart, man. It's, you know, like it knows like all the years and, and all the months. And <laughs> um, I'm easy to impress. And, you know, like if you, if you click on an, another date, right, it knows today, right? That's us, you know, this is us here. Um, but if you click on another thing, it like moves the highlight. And it also fires an on-change event in the background, which we'll futz around with in a little bit. Um, but, but yeah, so, so that's good. Right. Um, so now we have things, components running on the front end um, that that we, you know, typically are not in a position to use. Right. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing we don't have now is those attributes, uh, because we're running in JavaScript, um, and we're so, but we're not. So we're not in render PHP, which gets handed the attributes, and we're not. Uh, we're we're not running in, you know, like. Save JS, where we've been handed the props. We're we're just running JavaScript. So um, right now there is no kind of like official WordPress way to like pass through the attributes. But you know it's not it, you know it's not too complicated. Um, but it is kind of handy just you know to be aware that it's not that complicated. So. Um, so really what I'm going to do is just kind of spew the attributes out as a string in JSON format and then suck that back in in, in JavaScript JS. This is a, probably a good moment to mention that uh, there is this thing in the works called uh, the interactive API, which was anybody in that session or that workshop? So we have two winners, three, three, I was there. For, um, and um, whereas this is like how you can do this right now, um, a lot of the things where I'm saying like, oh, well, you don't get this there and that sort of thing, are solved by uh, the interactive API. It's pretty incredible. I, I don't think you'll see it in like completely usable production-ready form, you know, in no wise before September anyway. You know, and we know how these things work, but. Um, just the shortest possible aside, what it does, what's different about it is that the things that I'm doing with components um, in React on the client, it lets you do in an HTML syntax uh, on the server and it then passes down uh, React components in HTML that are already set with the various defaults that you might want and, and attributes and, and all of those good things. And it's much lighter weight than doing, like if you get into something really intense in terms of, you know, it, it, you're definitely paying a slight performance uh, penalty for loading this frontend.js file and having to put and you know, having to import libraries and so forth to run like you could run really complex react components here if you want um, but anyway i mean if if this is the direction you're headed you definitely want to be watching for that stuff because it's pretty cool it does it does work in a very react informed sort of mentality it's very sort of state and 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 uh, re-render kind of mindset so that's one you, you do have to sort of get to that which is not that hard but you've got to sort of change the way you're thinking about what's going to happen on the on the front end um, 
Yeah, but so that's coming. But right now, um, we've uh, let's see, we've got our class here. Oh yeah, sorry, I I knew I shouldn't have gone off on that tangent. So um, what I want to do here is um, you know sort of spew out the attributes. Um, because I've been known to mistype this, I'm just gonna. So, um, I'm, what I want to do here is you know, basically just drop into PHP, and um, echo uh, attributes my header. Whoops. Right, um, but um, I um, actually want that to be uh, JSON encoded, right? So um, there, there's a tool for that. Um, so um, and this is the part I always spell wrong. Okay, so WP JSON encode my header. Now, um, this will, and you'll just have to take my word for this, but if we saved this and then we re-rendered it, you would see that there was a string there that looked a lot like uh, JSON. But you might, if you were you know, really picky, you might notice that the, uh, the quotations were angled, and that fouls up the JSON interpreters of some browsers. So uh, I'm going to wrap this in a pre-tag not a per tag, a pre tag. Um, just because I'm superstitious, I'm going to put that semicolon there. Uh, is that everybody? Yeah, well, that should do it. Um, and then uh, over in the front end, I kind of need to do the same thing in reverse, right? So, um, just like I found and sucked the goodness out of the, the div that I marked, um, I want to do the same kind of an idea here. Um, And uh, the handy thing about using those pre's to straighten things out is that that gives me a nice uh, element to search to query on. Um, quick side note, it's entirely possible to have more than one instance of a block, right? Think about the paragraph block on a page, right? So um, I knew that in this demo that I would only be using one instance of the famed Parthenon block. Um, but if I used like seven of them, then what I'm doing right now with query selector would only find the first one, right? So uh, if, if we were like really trying to build this thing out, um, then we would want to use query selector all, which would give us an object back that would have a for each method and we would just use that for each to cycle through however many blocks there were. So. Um, and that, I mean, you'd figure it out because you'd notice that it wasn't doing the lower blocks, but um, just as a heads up. Um, yeah, so anyway, um, uh, that, so that gives us that. And, um, and here is where I'm going to take my chances in the interest of time and um, just like do several steps at once. But, um, uh, well, let's just assume that it's going to find that the attribute's fine. I would like to pass that then, or at least the my header part of it, into the function that renders the component, right? So, uh, and because these are essentially made up HTML tags, I can make up an HTML property. So uh, I can say like header, got that read, <laughs> um, 
is equal, whoops, no, it's not equal to that. It's equal to um, something that's going to be uh, handled dynamically, and so we're in JSX here, and so we need to put it between curly braces, yeah? Um, and we want ats, and the property is my header, and uh, then over here, we will automatically be passed in the properties that are in, in play at this point. And you know, as one typically does, I'm gonna call it props. And just to sort of show that we're getting the data that we wanna get, um, uh, we can, uh, whoops, again, doing something dynamic here, so I want my, uh, whoops, no, 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 props. And in this case, it'll be header and not my header because, uh, and it'll be spelled correctly, because uh, that's what I used as my attribute. Um, da -da -da -da. Look okay? Yeah. Okay, so now if we reload this, you'll see the wisdom of leaving the alert tag always wise um, because it, it stops everything before the components get rendered and you can see I wasn't kidding around right it's there like yeah yay um, and uh, and it's not here what did I do wrong folks Well, I'm not gonna worry about it. How's that? Um, if I didn't do whatever I obviously did wrong, it, it, that attribute would have shown up here next to this blank. Um, so I can get attributes here and I can pass through any data that I want to from render PHP here. And that gets it all down there. Um, but, um, there, there could be very well be a case where I wanted to um, uh, send up some data like, oh, like they just clicked on 15. Um, and uh, what we would do in that instance is uh, write our own REST API route and just query it for um, whatever it is we're looking for and it would send back that data. Um, how many of you are familiar with that process? Oh, come on, raise more hands because I have literally like three minutes, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually cheat and um, jump up here. Uh, and watch the thing fail. Let's try it again. Okay, that's looking a little better. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna like super fast show you what it looks like. Um, as I said, there, there's a video version of this where I do this at like normal human speed. Um, so um, on, on the Parthenon side, on the PHP side, we, um, just like a lot of other things you do in, uh, in, in WordPress, we add an action, there's an action called REST API init. Uh, which fires exactly when you think it does. And it, you know, you give it the name of a function, you write that function, that calls typically just this one thing, register rest route or root. And you've got the, um, this is the namespace um, for, uh, uh, for this uh, route, um, or for this API rather. Um, this is the route name, cal for calendar. And um, then there's an array that has a couple of uh, elements in it. One is methods, 
Uh, this would ordinarily, I mean, a lot of people do this by just saying get. Uh, I've been told that there are some wackadoodle machines out there, I don't know what they are, honestly, that have trouble with that. And this is the same thing, just in a, in a uh, system or WordPress uh, uh, defined constant. And then you have a callback, and that points to a function. And the function, in this function, I have just completely cheated and made a quick array of fake data. Um, when I was running through this last night, I was sensitive enough to my cultural surroundings to do my PMs in, in the 24-hour clock time. But um, I'm sorry, the version that's in the get is, please forgive me. Um, is this, and then over in, uh, in front end, and this is actually a little, uh, maybe a little less familiar, but I'm gonna use fetch, this guy right here, and send the URL for the, for the REST API, which is just a URL, right? Uh, and, and in fact, it's, it's this URL. And, but it's, it, it's a function that returns a promise, right? So. Uh, it's an asynchronous operation, so I do have to use await, and I do have to sort of think in my head, like, oh, this, this might take a couple of seconds, so like, I should be prepared for that. And I also have to flag this function as an async function, or it just plain doesn't work. So I get the response. Um, I ask, so the response is a promise. I ask that for the text. I get that as JSON, which needs to be parsed. That winds up in slots. And then you can, you know, without having to build the rest of it, you can console log that. Everybody is blowing up. Uh, if it's for me, I'm busy. Um, and um, I think that if we, and I really will be through the very second. This is like the big ta-da, I think, I hope. Um, how are you enjoying the big ta-da? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, see, this is what it looks like when it's actually working. Um, now, uh, in order to see this, I got to see the console, right? So let's bring that up real fast. I really am done. Um, and yeah, and right, there's nothing there yet because I haven't changed anything. But if I pick something, um, right, I get this console log, which is the data that we were just looking at, right? So it does come back. Um, yeah, that's pretty dramatic, right? Thank you so much. <laughs>